One reason for introducing the negative sign that we can say that heat is always transferred from high temperature to low temperature. And secondly, if you recall thermodynamics, the negative sign is introduced so that heat is always transferred from high temperature to low temperature. In that case, heat rejected was taken as negative. So the only significance of the negative sign, the heat is transferred from high temperature to low temperature. If the heat will flow from low temperature to high temperature is a violation of Clausius statement. Suppose we have a system and the heat is rejected from this. So it will always taken as negative. So we can say that the negative sign is also introduced to satisfy the second law. Both have same meaning. So we have derived the basic equation. Now we will try to understand the concept. What is basically one dimensional means. Basically pure one dimensional heat transfer is not possible. We have to assume it is as a one dimensional heat transfer. See this figure. In this figure you can find here that this one is a length. This one is height, this one is width and we will set up our axis system. So we are assuming the heat is transferred along this axis. That is x axis, this one is y axis, z axis. So when I say this is x axis and it is going along x axis and when we claim it is a one dimensional, if we mean that there is negligible heat transfer on the area which is perpendicular to y direction. So we neglect the heat transfer in y direction. And similarly, we neglect the area perpendicular to z direction. That is the area value as compared to the area perpendicular to x direction is negative. This one is area perpendicular to z direction. So if your model is 1D, then this area which is perpendicular to x direction is supposed to be very very large area as compared to the remaining two area. So ax is very very greater than ay and AX is also very very greater than AZ. If this happens, then the problem is of one dimensional. We never draw the figure like this. We only show the thickness. Area is always perpendicular to the plane. So one dimensional is assumption. Pure one dimensional is not possible. Some heat will transfer in Y direction and Z direction also. Now this is a very simple problem, but this time I will consider the heat transfer along X direction as well as Y direction. Let this surface is insulated along the periphery. So no heat is allowed to move from this boundary. The heat is allowed to enter from this section. Let call this heat transfer equal to Q. Let's say this is the area A1 and this heat transfer is Q. So this time the heat is only possible perpendicular to the given figure. So let me define first X, Y, Z system. This one is X axis, this one is Y axis and this one is Z axis. Now to be more precise, this area if I take A1, then I will not say simply Q, it is I have to say QY because it is going along Y direction and A1 is perpendicular to it. So that is the definition of area. So we have QY equal to minus K into DT by DY. You can't write this equation as minus A1 into K into DT by DX because this time the temperature gradient along X direction. So when you are going along the y direction, you have to use temperature gradient along y direction. You can't use temperature gradient along x direction. Now let's say that the heat enter from this side, rest surface is insulated and heat is allowed to leave from this surface. And let's say this area equal to A2 area. Now this area is perpendicular to x direction. This one is A1 area. Now this time is A2 area. So you have to write down this is Qx because it must be perpendicular to area and since you are writing Qx you must write per that area equal to A2 into K and you are compulsory to write dt by dx Qx then you have to write down dt by dx you can't write dt by dy this is not permitted so if you are going for x direction then we should write dt by dx and if you are going for y direction we should write dt by dy. So this is a numerical given to you. Let's say area equal to 1 meter square and area 2 equal to 2 meter square. And it is known that the dt by dy at section 1, that is that this section is 10 to the power minus 4. This value is provided to you. What we are interested is in dt by dx at section 2 as well as dt by dy at section 2. Now first of all we will go to the law of conservation of energy. No it is transferred from the solid wall because of insulated. Whatever the energy will come from section 1 has to be transferred to section 2 to maintain the steady state. So we want to find out our result at this section and for this section we have a heat transfer along the x direction. 
so dt by dy is not possible so dt by dy at section 2 is equal to 0 only thing that we can calculate dt by dx so what we can write down the qy and is equal to same as this qx and we'll use the Fourier law that is minus a1 into k into dt by dy at section 1 which is 10 to the power minus 4 is equal to minus of a2 into k into dt by dx at section 2 now k is cancelled we left with minus a1 minus minus cancel a1 is 1 meter square dt by dy is 10 to the power minus 4 area a2 is 2 we don't know dt by dx at section 2 so your answer is 0.5 10 to the power minus 4 that's all so simple